Shut up and sit down. What's going on, guys? This is the MMA Complex. My name is Josh. And I'm James. And it is January 12th, 2021. Um, well, you know, the, the, the new year started out good. For six days. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't last too long. Hope. <laughs> that didn't last too long. Yeah. So, um, that hope went away fast. Yeah. So right now there's like a lot of uh, things happening in the country, a lot of things happening uh, politically, and it's even bled over into MMA. Yeah. And um and yeah, uh so last time we recorded it, what it, it, it was, um, basically because we recorded on a Tuesday the episode came oh, out yeah. I think uh like later Wednesday or Thursday morning. Yeah. When the episode came out. And damn, a lot of stuff happened within the day. So obviously everybody knows now the Capitol was kind of a bum rush by Trumpers and the mega squad and uh the new turns Nazis, it, yeah, <laughs> and they were then there too. And um, uh, you know, there's turns out there's some uh, MMA people over there too. One in particular, Pat Militich, who we'll get into. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think you know you can't reason with people that believe really strongly about a certain ideology and a certain uh, you know way of um, you know looking at this country and where it's going and who they wanted to lead and then. I don't know. I think as an American, that is probably the most unpatriotic thing that's ever happened in this country. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was uh, domestic terrorists at its best. At its best. And they can, twi- you know, that side and the, his supporters and uh, can tr- twist it all they want. But that's it is what it is. It was and terrorism. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't it was Americans. It was terrorism. Domestic terrorism. So um, we're not really going to dwell on that. We're going to try to get off that. But uh, just, you know, uh, that's basically our thoughts about it. Yeah. Um, before, and the hearings going on right now too. Yeah, hearing. yeah. And so there's, you know, there's 25th Amendment hearings, and then there's, I think, impeachment hearings tomorrow. So what we're what we're here to talk about is how it relates, kind of, somewhat with MMA. Mm. Um, you have people like Jorge Masvidal who's threatening to, you know, get off of Twitter because Trump got banned off of basically every social media oh, presence. Shut up, Masvidal. Look at the um, mirror. You're you know, Dino. Yeah, it's so crazy <laughs> to see somebody like Jorge Masvidal be feel so strongly about Trump, and I see he went full on Trump, even more so than Colby Covington is right now. Colby Covington hasn't mentioned anything Trump. He doesn't wear any of the mega stuff anymore. He doesn't post half of the stuff he used to post. No. Um, now he's more of just like the American flag wearing type of yeah. thing. Yeah, he, he got he rid knows, of the whole. He knows better than to yeah. silent and, Trump. And it's weird. It's it's funny because you have Jorge Masvidal, who was never really outspoken politically. I'm sure, lean, obviously, lean that way, but he, he is full on, you know, Trump supporter. Even more like he's drinking that Kool Aid. Yeah, like a real Trump supporter, more than like a Colby Covington, who was a gimmick. Like ninety percent, you know, eighty percent of it was probably a gimmick. Yeah. Um. You know, with Jorge, I don't. What you do, whatever you want to do, man. I, I think with Jorge. Uh, it's kind of foolish and then it's a dwell on it so much and to just just give politics is not your thing dude just yeah you had your 15 minutes of fame and it, you know with the president yeah time to just focus on your career because you got a murderer's row in front of you and none of them are easy yeah and betting wise i don't think any you're not going to be the favorite in the majority of them no i i mean after seeing what i've seen from Jorge and and, and, be, and be, you know before all this happened, I was a huge fan. I of was him. a big fan. Was, now I, I'm going to root against him. Yeah. Very his fights. And, and <laughs> as far as like you know, in the cage, he's still I think one of my favorites to watch. But you know, I'm looking at his 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 current like stable of fighters that he has in front of him that he needs to get through: Leon Edwards, Colby Covington. You know, maybe a rematch with Usman. None of those are. Good. Favorable matches. Favorable matchups. I, I thought Edwards is probably the most favorable because he's not, you know, like a, a expert in any one thing. He's kind of like an all around kind of guy. So he's he has a shot because I think Jorge has got better stand up. He's you can consider him an expert stand up yeah. kind of person. Um, with the other two, the other two are big, strong, aggressive chins. 
cardio. Cardio, yeah. So, you especially know, with Kobe. Good stand up and and wrestling, and they are just they don't they're relentless. So yeah, um, I yeah. As far as yeah, as for that pertains for Jorge in terms of his his uh, his career going forward, but and his MAGA stuff. Um, Pat Militich made the news today. So he uh, was let go by LFA uh, because of some questionable tweets and the fact that he participated in the Capitol uh, you know, riot. Riot. Yeah. You know, he was there. He, he may not have. He, he said that he went up to a certain point and didn't, you know, he wasn't one of the people that crossed the barricade lines or went into the Capitol, but he was there. And he, he marched with them to the Capitol, but he didn't go inside or anything like that. But as far as he's saying, um, and, and uh, you know, a typical uh, Trumper talk, you know, uh, free freedom and bullshit, whatever. But yeah, so uh, Alifay let him go. He has supposedly no ill will towards Ed Soares and, and the people at Alifay um, that they, they were pressured to do it by sponsors and all these other corporate people. But which I can kind of believe. Ed Sor seems like a guy that likes to have, you know. I'm sure he's, he has a really good relationship with Pat. Yeah, he's probably the guy to come down and tell him that hey, it's time that you you got to go. Um, I think it's good that they let him go. I, I don't think any company or anybody that stood for that, cheered that on, or it was even there. I don't think they should. You know, most of the time I'm not in favor of people losing their jobs for certain things, but. Something like that, where you're you're creating, uh, you know, a riot. You're in treason. People, five people have died, died. since then. Yeah, um, a police officer and a, a police officer was beaten to death. A woman was shot there. Another one was trampled. Another one committed suicide like the day after. And then uh, I don't oh, know what really? else. Yeah. Why? Because I don't know. He was one of the guards. He was one of the people there, the officers there, and shot himself that weekend. Not sure why, but um. So yeah, uh, Pat Milches is there. He's still, you know, holding strong to his beliefs, and I'm glad uh, LFA let him go. Yeah, no, yeah, me too. I mean, like Josh said, uh, you know, I think I think what happened on last Wednesday was was as un-American as 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 you as can it be. Gets. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was disgusting, and and I think yeah. anybody who participated in that or even agrees. Whatever they're marching about should let go. Should yeah. be let go. Because and you can't compare it to a Black Lives Matter thing or any other movement. Because no, it was a peaceful e- process. Yeah. And even with uh, how those kind of movements turned out, where there it was violence at one point, that's what happens a lot of times when when the movements go peaceful, 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 and they're met with pushback, pushback, and then eventually violence does erupt. But they, as far as I'm concerned. A lot of those movements are for a cause. They're for for change. Change. They're for other people, and you may not agree with the vandalism that goes on at some point uh, during those during those uh, marches and riots or whatever you want to call them. But this one was straight up for one single man. Yeah. And hidden behind the flag of freedom. Basically. Yeah, and 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 a bit different between the Black Lives Movement. Was that you know, like yeah, people marching with signs versus these guys are coming in with full body gear, yeah, and zip and, ties and zip ties with you know, they, and, they had and, a, and Confederate flags, and, yeah, exactly in the nation's capital. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> it's disgusting. Some of them had uh, you know, neo Nazi uh, freaking t shirts and sweatshirts and all this other stuff. One of yeah. them was like Camp Auschwitz or something. Like one guy was wearing a Camp Auschwitz sweatshirt. Yeah. It's fucking this disgusting. It's, it's crazy. And then they have people like Latinos and Asians in the same room. Like, yeah. come on. And all the, all look, the, look at that guy. That's who you're supporting? Yeah. And all the sympathizers, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you guys don't agree with the, what we're saying, man, it's, uh, then you can stop wa- listening or watching or whatever, man. It's, 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 uh, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's how we feel about it. Well, you know, also that's all, that's all, as an American, you should feel about it. But yeah, you know, exactly. Whatever. And you know, and, and one last thing about about the difference between the two uh, movements is that, um, oh, God damn it, that's my train of thought again. No, that's cool. It was, uh, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, that the, the Black Lives Movement, that I mean, the like the protests, yeah, were met with 
with armed forces with right gear yeah. and these people were like come on in you guys let them in come on in selfies and everything you know if it was any, anybody of color they've been shot down no. right before the the doors and plus not even that they they one they had the president's blessing to go in yeah they he i'm sure and other republican senators that you know believe in his cause uh Crazy. you know kept basically uh you know the national guard and anybody any strong police presence away from there yeah so basically opening the gates for it to happen all the all the, the police the capital police that were there were completely overrun there's mm-hmm. there's no way they were going to stop anybody there was not enough of them and then some of them you know some of them and I, and there's not all cops but you know some of them that were there were all for what was going down so i saw there were some of them taking you know giving hugs and taking selfies with these guys just <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's crazy. A problem. That's a scary part because you have people in, you know, of all walks of life, and especially the ones that are in the, you know, the military or the, the, the police that are for and believe this kind of stuff. And a lot of a lot of ex-military, or even current military uh, people, were a part of this whole riot group. It's scary shit, man. Because, oh yeah, dude. Because you have people you can't. How if you're going to combat this? You know, there could be. A handful of people in the room that you're in they hate that you. are for what's going on and may even sabotage it or may even do you know what i mean like if you're trying to stop this kind of thing so yeah. hopefully it's, this is like like a drama series it's but in real life i i mean i've never seen anything like it it felt like i was watching the movie that day you know and and then we could talk about the the what the problem that jorge masvidal had with social media and the and and uh and them censoring trump and all the you know queuing on people and all this other basically censoring free speech if you want to say it. but it's it's i don't know it's different now i think i think you have to I, I don't agree with censorship of any kind really but when you're dealing with platforms that are not necessarily regulated in any way and nobody really wants the internet regulated but if you if if you don't have some type of control over the information that gets out there, uh, this kind of stuff happens. Yeah. And, and it's like, and these companies have so much power and influence, and this is where most of the people get their news from, that unless you get some type of oversight over it, maybe not full on censorship, but like, you have to control the information that gets distributed out there because this can just obviously, yeah, case in point, capital destroy the country. Yeah, for sure. Or you know, whatever, kill people, get people murdered. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> you know, a Vince man who's a who's a, a dear friend of uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, um, he even removed Donald Trump from the from the Did WWE. He? So yeah, yeah, just because you know, well, because I know Mick Foley was calling for him to asking Vince to remove him from the Hall of Fame. You think he's going to do that? Um I don't know, but I know he removed him and like he they don't allow it to to mention his name anymore. They can't you can't say the word Donald Trump in the, on so. WWE. Dana hasn't said anything. It's going to be interesting this weekend because you know they're going to yeah. ask him. Yeah. Gonna and it's going to like it's going to it's going to hurt his company even give it the right it's answer. Better give the right answer, man. Yeah. And um you know cuz with the WWE like like they're a public company, yeah. so they have like members of the board so I think they kind of pressured Vince to do what he, what he did because good. good. It's it's as an American, you should be upset, and you should, you know, these Trump and and the people who support him and his followers, hardcore followers, should. I'm not talking about people that maybe voted for him or whatever, but the people that just support him through and through, and he can't do no wrong in their eyes, and and especially those people that went there to the Capitol, yeah, prosecute him, man. I just I just can't fathom how people can yeah. still. Be on his side after I this. I know it's crazy, man. But you have to. I'm hoping they set an example with him. Yeah, because you can't. Because if you don't, you can't. If you don't punish anybody for what happened, it's, it's chaos. You're open. Yeah, you're and the rest of the world kind of just laughing at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. The man. most secure. Well, what people thought was the most secure building was really easy to get into. <laughs> anyway, it's so embarrassing. Really um, embarrassing. And and. You, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and that's as far as what do you think Dana's going to say? I'm curious to see what Dana's going to say. I'm he I, my bet, my money is that he's going to be disappointing in my eyes because I feel he's going to give some type of like I want to say he's going to condone what happened, but he's going to be like 
I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, uh, the UFC and politics don't mix, so I don't want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, gonna I think say. he's going to probably completely dodge it. He's like, he's, you know He's going to say that. that, that we're, we're here for fights. I don't even know what's going on in that outside yeah. world right now. Yeah. You know that's, what I mean? I'm that's too, just, I'm that's too a busy. very Dana White thing to do. I'm too busy. Yeah. To, get, to, to get out of it. And he should. Uh, if that's the best thing you could do. If you have nothing good to say, don't say it at all, basically. Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. But that's what he's going to say. I think so. And if even if he does actually have a statement for it, I don't see him trashing Trump. No. I see him trashing just the people the writers, that were there. Yeah. That's it. And not even mention Trump. No. Yeah. 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 It's going to be either, either one of the two or both. Yeah. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's disappointing you know, that people can't look, you know, that they have so much faith in one person. You know what I mean? Like, even when Barack Obama was there, even like Biden, I, for me, I'm just like, uh, like with Biden, I'm like, I just like, I just want some type of quiet. Yeah, and change. Not, yeah, I, I don't trust the guy. I don't, I don't, I, I, they have, they have, they have control now. They need to do something with it. Yeah. Because if not, they're going to lose in 2024. So they, but, get, you know, I think that, I mean, I think Biden can't do worse than Trump. No, no, not even, no, not even close. <laughs> no. no, Trump's the worst thing that's ever happened to this country. Yeah, and no matter it's 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 obvious. There's what, no good that, no. that came out of Trump. And look at look at how he's going, and he's fucking himself over. I think in a lot of ways, he 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 could have just stayed quiet, let it, let you know, gave it to Biden, whatever at the end towards the end. If you want to put up, talk a bunch of game, and then just the last couple of weeks, just let it go. Yeah, go, let Biden do his thing. He was even planning to to attend yeah. the inauguration. Then yeah, that's fine. And <laughs> and then. And then campaign for other people, stay in the Republicans' good graces, run in twenty twenty four. To shut you, but he couldn't and, shut his mouth. And now he's like a whiny little bitch. Yeah, and now a tantrum. He basically just fucked himself over. Yeah, and honestly, I felt he was clear to win the election this year, but he fucked himself over then by not taking coronavirus seriously, politicizing everything, and just. Just not being a leader, like it's yeah. it's like they they always say it's like it's it's easy to be president when things are good, but when things are bad is when you know the job actually becomes important. Yeah, and the, uh, your test that's that's always your big test as a president is when things go bad. When things went bad, he just fucking that one time when we had the the the, the surge of numbers for the coronavirus, his whole thing during that whole time it was, was just, his election. Yeah. And how and how much he like it was rigged. Yeah, and just he didn't give a fuck about coronavirus. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck about the American people who are suffering, not only money wise, but yeah, their lives were at stake. And he 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 screwed himself out of that winning that election because Biden didn't even have to do anything. Biden barely even campaigned. He yeah, didn't, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he let Trump. He let Trump just fuck himself shoe over. Shoe. And and Trump's all he had to do was just shut his mouth, let the weeks go by, run in twenty twenty four, make. Biden's life hell for the next four years, and then you just go and fuck yourself over yeah. again. And it's now, so stupid. Man. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad I'm for glad it, it I'm happened. Happy for it. But I mean, tonight or tomorrow, we'll find out if yeah. you can, if you, like he screwed. Yeah, I, I just I, I really hope they they make an example out of him, man, and set an example to all his freaking followers and supporters and all that stuff, yep. man. It's really it's really sad. All right, so let's get to some actual fight news. Fight news. That's uh, that's our piece for the. What's going on in the world today, and we'll see how it all turns out, and we'll get, we'll recap that next week. But yeah. um, as far as uh, what's going on in the fight world, um, not a lot of news. We ha- we do have the fights coming up this weekend, which I can't wait for. I know the the card is like so so, but the main event is just insane. Yeah. Um, as far as fight news, you have Diego Sanchez saying that his next fight is his last fight. Um, it's about which time, man. We're all happy about. Um. As far as the light heavyweight division, you have Bellator, um, you know, and you have people like Corey Anderson really talking a lot, saying Bellator's got the upper hand in terms of the best light heavyweight division. I kind of tend to somewhat agree. somewhat agree with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially John Jones of, is gone. Yeah, and and who's left star power wise? Ugh, I don't know. So and Shogun just retired. There's not a lot of guys yeah, it's, it's in that. It's a very division. shallow division. It's a very shallow division in terms of top talent. So I would say. Definitely, I think I would agree with Corey Anderson that Bellator is, at this point has a better light heavyweight division yeah. and um, it's shaping up to have a really nice middleweight division too with yeah. you all going in there. Um, you have, you know, obviously three cards coming up. Um, 
and three uh, fight cards uh, over in Fight Island. Mm. Um, you have new regulations in terms of Fight Island. They're going to go through things a little bit differently in terms of loosening up some of the restrictions, especially they're going to have allow, I think, 25% occupancy. I think they're going to allow some people in there. Um, I think upon arrival, they're going to have to have uh, a you know check, 48-hour uh um, quarantine. Physical, quarantine type of thing uh they're gonna do um they're gonna have to wear face mask everywhere uh people in the in attendance are basically gonna have to follow these guidelines too so um i think uh alcohol will be available through uh through vendors there um sanitation will be the main priority of the event and uh there's gonna be sanitation sanitation everywhere throughout the throughout the event so that's uh it's gonna be a a big they're gonna take a lot of precautions and i don't think they really mess around over there in abu dhabi so it's gonna no, be interesting it's probably be like like royalty yeah and then definitely the people in the audience are probably gonna be the wealthy wealthy uh of uh abu dhabi. of the abu dhabi for yeah. sure so um as far as um other fight news i think that is mainly it there's not a lot yeah. um I mean, there hasn't been much going on. I, th in I thought it was funny with the whole uh, Anthony Pettis uh, UFC departure that the UFC Uncensored podcast, the one with Matt Sarah and what's yeah. his name, uh, did not mention Anthony Pettis <laughs> and, and, and like by name. And like they're just like, it's a company freaking podcast. Yeah. So, they, so why, do you, why do they call himself Uncensored? I don't know. You know, I like Matt Sarah, but it's I would very censored. I would hate to be in that type of environment and just yeah. be a puppet to uh, Dana White, a mouthpiece to Dana White, basically. Yep. So, so, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's get to the fight card this weekend. All right. Uh, so the fights this weekend: LFA. Um, let's see, LFA ninety-seven Brown versus Estrazulas is taking place this weekend, January fifteenth. Uh, Brave. CF forty six is uh, also taking place this weekend over in Russia, um, and then uh, UFC on ABC. Weird one, Holloway versus Cater. Uh, the card itself. Let me look at this card. I'm not going to really spend too much on this card. We're just going to really talk about Holloway and Calvin Cater on on here. Um, looking at the card, I mean, it's this, you know, Vanessa Mello, Sarah Morais. Uh, Joaquin Buckley, Alessio, uh, mm. Alessio de Ch Chirico, um, Ponza Nebo is coming back. Matt Brown versus Carlos Condit is a great kind of throwback fight. Yeah. Um, and then you have Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. Um, 21 and 6 for Max, and then Calvin Cater is 22 and 4. And so Max and Calvin. Okay, so your thoughts on the fight? Um, great fight. Uh, this fight sells badass. itself. Yeah, for exactly. a card that's like lackluster, this fight sells itself. Oh, definitely. Um, I know Max is only two in his last two fights. Yeah, but they're they were pretty close fights. I th I, yeah. and I thought that Max Holloway at least one still one has it. Yeah, yeah. I think he still has it in him to make a run for a title. Yeah, and he's my favorite fighter right now, so I want to go with Max. You're going Max. Yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Kelvin Cater. I think the pe I think the guys that are his gym is like the American version of what's happening over in uh, New Zealand with Israel and them. Oh yeah, like the guys coming out of that gym and him in particular leading the pack. It's like they have they their game planning, their boxing with the overall game. You know, is is their their boxing is outstanding in that gym. Yeah, and then they just throw everything else around it, mm. and they're tough as nails. Um, I think they're really good game planners, and then Calvin Cater is just like, just, and, and like super talented and and just a, you know, a dog in terms of like, he's coming after you. Yeah. So, I was thinking about it. Uh, as far as Max is concerned, I think he's, I think he's becoming predictable. And I think people are are he's like even the two fights that I saw him against uh, with uh, Volkanovski. He's doing a lot of the same movements. He just did a lot of the same thing. He didn't really change a lot. And maybe he avoided the leg kicks, but that was about it. Mm. As far as I think, Calvin Cater has a ton of weapons. Film, to, yeah, he's got a lot, a lot of weapons. One really good, you know, in particular is boxing. Yeah, 
and I think there's a lot of film to go on with Max. Mm. And I don't, I didn't, I think Max is not doing what he needs to do to evolve. Yeah. And I think that's, I think Kelvin's probably gonna expose that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, he's getting, he, he got engaged and distractions. No distractions. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And Hopefully, he, like, uh, he uses that for motivation yeah. rather than a distraction. What's the guy fight? You know, but I'd say this fight play out when these two guys is banging it out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a dog fight. Yeah. This is an important fight for Max because. Yeah. I mean, people, three people, three people in a row. Ex- yeah. Three in a row. And then people can excuse your losses in the title fight. They yeah. can excuse them because they're to one person. Um, and a lot of people felt like you won at least one of them, if not both of them. Yeah. Um, but three but, in a row. But three in a row is bad sets you look. back. It sets yeah. you back. And then, you know, this is the fight that you need to at least keep your position as the, like a number one contender. And if mm-hmm. you don't do that, you're going to fall back to like number five and fight number five, six to get back to number yeah. one. It took him a long time to get to the, to, the, to the spot. Yeah. So he needs to keep it. You're going to have to fight Calvin Cater and probably two more people to get another title shot. Yeah. So this is a, a big win. If he, if he takes out Calvin Cater... He can make no an, he can make an argument to give himself a title shot. Yeah, if he doesn't, he's gonna have to go back in line and fight. Yeah, start again from the beginning. Yeah, start again from the beginning. Um, there's a good. I think UFC put out a really good kind of like mini doc, like a 15 minute thing on Calvin Cater and his gym. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. It's like on UFC.com. It's like really quick, but it's okay. really well done. I think they should do more of those things. I don't know. Maybe it's hard right now in COVID times. COVID time, but yeah. You should start doing more of those things, highlighting guys and gyms, and especially and, gyms, and yeah. getting people familiar with, you with know, their teammates, the players. And coaches. Yeah. Uh, Matt Brown and Carlos Condit. You want to? How do you think that's going to mm. go? I like Carlos Condit in that fight. Yeah. The first time they fought was pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's sad to see these two guys like, especially Condit, especially especially Matt Brown. I think I don't know. Yeah. He he, he, like, he looked dog. he looked kind of he he looked like he slowed down, well, especially when you're fighting young guys. Yeah. It's just it's not, you're not going to look yeah, good. Yeah, I feel like he aged pretty bad, too. Yeah, he aged in that amount of time off. Yeah. He aged a lot. Carlos looks young still, looks like himself, but has just been slow to the... He's a shovel himself, for sure. Yeah, he's been slow. Like He's he's, he's very flat-footed, he's, too. And he's he's missing a step. Like, that that trigger, mm-hmm. that, that... It's just not there anymore. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, not. man. Um, what else? Uh... Any other predictions for this year? Oh, uh, fuck. You know, you think the Diaz brothers will come back? No. Nate or Nick? One of the two, but that's both not at the both. same time. I think, it, I think it would take a lot. How about Nick? I think Nick's the biggest question. I think no. Nate, Nate, there's probably a good chance Nate will at least have one fight. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see Nick coming back. I don't see Nick coming back either. Yeah. That and that. you spent too much time off. Your yeah. your career is done. Oh yeah, it's done. Yeah, he's saying relevant because of his brother. Yeah, your your career is done. You're like, yeah, Nate, uh, Nate is keeping your guys's business, whatever you guys got going on out out in uh, alive. Yeah, because like, Nick's out of the picture. Nick's out of the picture. So yeah. All right, man. That's our show. Um, thank you guys for watching, listening. Sorry to get so heavy a little bit, but there's a lot of heavy shit going on. Yeah, we're um, talking about the shit. Yeah, so we'll we'll recap whatever's going on in the world and fights and all that shit on the next episode and thank you guys for watching and listening until then enjoy the fights and enjoy your week